from the West Coast to the East Coast, and everything between, folks. You're about to be live with Lonzo, the Godfather of West Coast Hip Hop. And this is how we do it every Thursday, folks, right here on the show we call the NWA Show, Not Without Alonzo, and we are officially live. Now, hey, folks, how y'all doing today? You're live with Alonzo, the Godfather of West Coast Hip Hop, and my guest today is Ms. none other than Freeway Rick, but I just, I just got a text. It's going to be a few minutes late, so we got to kick it for a minute, folks. I got to start the show on time. I can't start on CP time because y'all won't be here when I come back. So uh, for the next few minutes, y'all, to my man, my guest gets here, we're going to kick it for a minute, folks. And I hope you bear with me. He will be here shortly. I just got a text from his assistant. He was stuck on the freeway. You know how things can get here in California. So um, we got a few things we can talk about in the meantime. One of the things we can talk about is the condition of my good friend, Dr. Drake. You all probably know uh, he was taken to the hospital on third on two. Tuesday, suffering from a brain aneurysm. And uh, he was doing good. We haven't had any, had, had any updates since then, but um, I'm hoping and praying that he'll come out 100% because aneurysms are no joke. They are no joke. That is a direct uh, impact on your brain, and we're definitely praying for him to have a full and a quick recovery. What's up, Mark? What's up, Galen in Baltimore? What's up, folks? I got people all over the country too many. We getting big. We growing a little bit. I see that. I like that. I like that. Hey, folks, like I said before, um, my guest today is Freeway Rick. He just texted me a minute ago, said he's on his way. He wasn't in front of his computer just yet, and he was going to be a few minutes late. So um, as we sit here and get to know each other for a hot minute and shoot the shit, that's how we're going to do it for the, few minutes, for the next few minutes, y'all. Like I said earlier, um, the biggest story right now in hip hop, is uh, Dr. Dre, super producer, mogul, NWA, and world-class record crew member, a good friend of mine that I grew up with back in the day, um, have, was diagnosed with a brain aneurysm on Wednesday. And last we heard, uh, he was still in the hospital. Uh, he was doing well. I reached out for some of his family members. She said, pray for him. And um, that's what we're going to do. What's up, Dominique, Kenny B? Uh, Mark, it's all good, folks. We're just trying to get this audience built up. What's up, uh, Kenny Kirk? Bama in the house. Oh, shit, we in Alabama. Much love, folks. Do me a favor. If y'all have already done it, please like, subscribe, and share the page. I'm trying to grow the page to another level, folks. So please uh, like, share, and subscribe, and notify. So that way, when it uh, comes up, folks will know what's happening. And also, man, um, if y'all want to get a direct email when the show jumps off, um, go to my, uh, go, uh, go to your phone, go to the text line, text in the keyword Lonzo to 424-363-8141. That's 424-363-8141, and you'll get a direct feed. You'll be on my direct email list. So anytime I go live with anything hot, interesting, um, I can give you a text. You ain't got to wait for, for me to send an email out. It'll go straight to your phone. I'd like to build up my text my text uh, messages as uh, powerful as possible so I can have an impact, folks. I got some f folks that like what we do, and I want to make sure that you are here every time we do it. We got some hot shows coming up. I see the pimp player hustles in the, in the house and Jay Ross in the house. Is that Jay Ross or Jay Ross theory? Uh, I got to figure that out one day. Uh, J-R-O-O-S, okay? Um... Mickey, what's up, Doc? Hey, man, I, was, I called you the other day, Doc. I ain't heard back from you yet. I need, need to holler at you. I need you on my show. Mickey, uh, uh, Mickey Royal, uh, OG, um, uh, I, I don't want to say what he does, but yeah, OG Pimp, buddy of mine, okay? In fact, I got a friend of mine coming on the show. She was in the game for a while, and uh, she'll be here next week, China Doll. And uh, I'd like to get y'all together, at least get you to chime in for a minute. In the meantime, folks, you're live with Lonzo. I'm waiting on my guests to come through. Uh, Mo Roots, okay, like Moose. Much love, Doc. Jay Roots, just like Moose. I got you. Um, we're waiting on my man, um, Freeway Rick, to stop through. He was on the freeway. He was stuck in traffic. He will be here shortly. Meanwhile, we're just kicking it. If anybody knows anything, have heard anything about uh, Dr. Dre's condition, please drop it in the chat room, folks. Please drop it in the chat room. Um, I, you know, I, I've been getting phone calls from all our mutual friends from around the country, and I have. Um, 
no new information. I have media feeds, anything like that. So I refuse to disseminate any any anything that's non-confirmed. I'm not trying to run a, a bullshit channel here. So I'm not gonna just drop drop some bunch of theories and uh, concepts because we do have a personal relationship and I just don't want to ruin that at this time. Uh, people got all the kind of thing to say. I heard all kinds of situations and I ain't gonna repeat most of them because I don't want to go there. Because you never kick a man when he's down. Uh, uh, my man said he's heard he's recovering okay. Well, that's good to hear, man. I, that's good to hear. Hopefully he will make a full recovery because aneurysms are no joke. And uh, if he does, uh, may God be with him and uh, we'll see what's happening. In the meantime, folks, um, if you got anything that you want to drop in the, in the chat line uh, while we wait on our guests to uh, come here, come on, I'd appreciate it. Uh, I'm waiting on my boy to get here, Freeway Rick. Let me see something right here. Uh, oh, okay, I can do that too. Okay, all right, I learned something today. Pimp Player the Hustler said he I heard he's recovering nicely. Uh, okay, good, good. Um, so yeah, I just learned I learned a new trick on my uh program here. Uh, Monty K1, what's 1K? What's up, Doc? How you doing? Uh, just trying to do my thing, man. We are here live. We live, we go live every Tuesday, every Thursday. Every Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday, I'm getting interviewed by my best division. Thursday, I view, I interview other people. So I have various guests come on the show and I do the interviewing. Okay. What's up? Go to work. Okay. So this is how we do it, folks. Like I said, every Tuesday, I'm live and, and I, my show is hosted by my man, Dusty Vision. He talks to me and asks me questions about various hip hop issues, political issues, things of that nature. Okay. On Thursdays, I bring the guest in and I do the interviewing. So if you, um, Want to follow the show? Please, folks, do not hesitate to hit me on my uh, my text line, and that is 424-363-8141. Uh, 424-363-8141. Right now, we're waiting on Freeway Rick to get on the line so we can have a, a hell of an interview. I got some questions I already got laid out. If you have a question for Freeway Rick, drop it in the chat line for me right quick. If you have a question for Free Ray Rick, drop it in the chat line for me, okay? Uh, thank you, uh, Jay, Jay Ruth. Uh, love, I'm going to put that on the screen. That's, I like that. My man Jay Ruth says he loved the show because it's knowledgeable and entertaining. That's, 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 that's my goal, Doc. That's my goal. Um, when, I, uh, when I first got into the podcasting, I took a little, little class on social media. And my biggest concern was I'm a grown ass man and I can't be doing no dumb shit. Okay. I don't mind being funny. I don't mind being silly sometimes. If you know me real well, you know, I can be very silly for a grown ass man, but I'm not going to do no stupid ass shit. I'm not going to embarrass myself. I ain't going to sell nobody out. So I had to come with something that was going to be um, fit me, but also be uh, productive. And that's why I, I'm glad to hear people like Jay Ruth, Jay Ruth, of the J. Ruth Theory, I'm sorry, the J. Ruth Theory, uh, say what he said, love the show, knowledgeable and entertaining. That right there is a true compliment to me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Doc. That's our goal, is to be entertaining and also be um, be informative and uh, drop, some, drop some knowledge on you. Uh, what's up, John Wick? Bond in the house. Lamont, what's up with you folks? Uh, we just here, man, waiting on my man, Freeway Rick, to jump on the line. Like I said before, um, I'm, I'm, I'm learning my new program every day. Next week's guest is, um, you might have seen her on Fresh Out. She was on Fresh Out, um, the original China Doll. She was a former, um, a, uh, a former porn star, uh, abused woman, uh, did her thing for a while. But what you don't know is we grew up on the same street. Yes, right. Me. China Doll, Dr. Dre, we all grew up on the same street right there, just outside of Compton on Carlton Avenue. And she's a personal friend of mine. So we're gonna talk, we're gonna get get into a little detail about her career, her life, and what she what she went through, what she's doing, what she what she went through, what she going through, and what she planned to do, folks. So next week, just Thursday, next Thursday, the original China Doll. 
No joke. Okay. <laughs> that. Okay. I'm going to leave that. If you ever see one of her movies, uh, she ain't no joke. And, uh, and also, folks, if you'd like to support the show, please feel feel comfortable. Drop the cat, drop a cash app in there. I'll take it. I appreciate it. Uh, the Lonzo Infotainment, dollar sign, the Lonzo Infotainment. If you'd like to see this show grow, and I'm trying to grow it as much as I possibly can, I would appreciate your support. Um, right now, I'm a one man show. I'm a one man. I'm switching. I'm switching cameras. I'm switching lights. I'm uh, doing the interviews. I'm booking a guest. So if you would like to uh, see this show grow, I'd appreciate it. Whatever you want to do, I I would thoroughly appreciate it. So um, please cash app uh, Lonzo the Lonzo Infotainment. That's the, that's my company, the Lonzo Infotainment. So. Uh, as, uh, like my man said, it's entertaining and it's informative, and that's why I call, called it the Infotainment Company, the Lonzo Infotainment Company, and uh, we do this every week, y'all. Every Tuesday and Thursday, every Tuesday live, and sometimes this is the only part about being live that I don't like. If somebody gets caught up, I got to talk to y'all <laughs> for the next few minutes like an idiot. Now I've done this before; I've had TV shows before. And my man, uh, my man, um, uh, Mickey Royal has been on my show. He's always been a great guest, and he understands what he knows. I know how to do this right here. It took 45 years to find out who killed brother in 1973 from a talk show. I'm going to live and tell the story repeats within myself, Compton. Okay, uh, let me see here. I'm going to put this on the screen. It took 45 years to find out who killed my brother. Oh, in 1973, from a talk show. I'm going. To, I'm going live to tell the story to make peace with myself in Compton. Mark, man, that's deep, Doc. Um, you know, uh, hit me up. We can talk about that too. I'll bring you on the show if that's something you want to talk about. If you want to go live with me, I would love to have you on the show. That's a, that's a, a very interesting subject. It took 45 years to find out who killed my brother in 1973 from a talk show. I'm going to tell, I'm going live to tell the story to make peace with myself in Compton. Wow, folks, that's a deep one right there. And I wonder, I'd like to know what talk show you was watching. Was it a podcast? Was it a, uh, was it a podcast? Was it a uh, Maury or something like that? I don't know. We, we, I'd love to find out. Uh, please feel free to give me a holler, man. Um, reach out for me. E email me. I'm gonna put a, a screen for my uh, my email. That way you can email me, and we can uh, book the show. And this is how I book a lot of my my acts too. My my guests on my show. People I just meet. I learn. I learn the story. I love interesting stories. My guests are not celebrities. If you got a dope story, if you got a great story, you got a powerful story. I'll bring you on my show. I did it when I had my show in Compton. If some of y'all know, I had a show in Compton for 15 years called Issues in the Hood. And I rocked that way for 15 years and it kept me going. And if you got a, a, a powerful story, like my man right here does, finding the, finding the person who killed his brother on the talk show, um, I would love to have you. Um, I would love to have you on the show. In fact, even Dominique Page says, that's an interesting story. That's an interesting story. So yes. Um, that um, Dominique is in the house. Mark, you got it. Uh, Malika, Malika Houston, um, Maxi Mixum vibes. Galen, yes, China Dog. Yeah, that's my girl. We all love her. So we, as we sit here waiting on Freeway Rick, folks, he should be here any minute. Um, if you have an interesting story, you want to be on the show, hit me up in the chat room. If you got something, if you got a question. You want to ask Free Ray Rick when he gets here. Hit him if it's a good if it's a good question. Not too long. I'll put it up on the screen. That way he can see it. You can see it, and then we, I can share it with everybody. Okay. Uh, I just learned that. I just learned that today. Just now, I just learned how to do that. So um, I had a well. Um, I uh, upgraded my program, and it allows me to do a lot more things than I was able to do at first. Hood peace, much love, baby. You know how we do it. Um, you know how we do it. Let me let me uh break out some hood peace deal for y'all right quick. Cause that's my that's my my uh that's something I'm I'm really pushing this year, folks. We got two, two brothers.
too many sisters died at the brothers and sisters to ignore that, that, that problem that plagues our community. I have a series of t-shirts. I have a series of street uh, yard signs that you'll be seeing in the community shortly uh, that will bear this logo, hood peace uh, coming to a hood near you if you allow it. Hood peace, do it for the children. Hood peace will stop gentrification. Hood peace brings people together. Um, hood peace can do a whole lot of things for our community. So uh, this is one of the things that I'm pushing for my for, for my nonprofit, the Lyrical Revolution. If you'd like to support the Lyrical Revolution, uh, please go to our website, lyricalrevolution.org. And as I look on my screen, I see my man just stepped up. He just stepped up on the uh, on the screen here. But he upside down. <laughs> I think he upside down. Free Ray Rick, I see you, Doc. What you man? I see you, but you're sideways. But that just fit you. I'm gonna try to get it right. How about that? What's up, Reggie Green? From the Dell Phonics. Much love. Willie B. Happy New Year to you too. No news on no no new news on Dre as of yet. Um, I'm still hearing the same basic stuff. He's doing he's doing okay. They didn't say if he had an operation or not. If there was if operation was necessary. Last I heard, they, they were running tests on him. And um, that being what it is, I have to uh, take it for what it is, folks. Uh, I see you, Rick. I see you You're looking a little sideways there, though, Doc. You're trying to come in. Uh, that's the real. That's the real free Ray Rick, folks. Not the bearded one that claimed he was free Ray Rick. This is the real Rick Ross, Doc. How's that? Real Rick Ross. How's that? Yes. Is that better? He sued, but was, I think he was a statute of limitations thing. Pimp players, I think it was a statute of limitations. You can, we talk about it when he get on the show. When he get when he gets locked in, we can uh, we can talk about it. I see, I see him on my on monitor, but all I just see is a picture right now. Uh, uh, Alicia, thank you, darling, for hood, supporting Hood Peaks. Happy New Year to you, too, Angela, the incense lady. How you doing, baby? I showed Miss Dancing with you. I showed Miss Dancing with you. We ain't seen each other since the pandemic jumped off. Uh, <laughs> Monty, you, you wrong, Doc. How many leads? He got buried in the backyard. Come on, Monty. <laughs> We on we on public television. Oh no, we would never discuss that. Um, who else we got online? We got a bunch of folks online today. We, we growing rich. We waiting on you, baby. I see you coming. I see you coming. In. I see your, your your avatar, but you ain't you ain't locked in yet. Um, hey, is that yeah, he coming? He's coming. He's coming. I see the double R, Rick Ross. The R is changing sex shape. Hey, Donovan Lane, what's up with you, Doc? Happy to do you too, my brother. Thank you for tuning in right quick. We are waiting on my man, Free Ray Rick. He just stepped off. Okay, he, he, we know he we know he's by his computer now. We know he's by the computer. We know he's by the computer, so he'll be here just a minute. So give him a minute. Uh, um, he, I, he's coming back right now. I see him coming back right now, but he is, is he's not on the monitor yet. Okay. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. I'm just watching my monitor. I'm looking at him. I can see him. Y'all can't see him yet because he ain't, he ain't officially in yet. But yes, folks, thank you for um, watching me on YouTube. And if you're on my YouTube channel, please subscribe, 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 share, and notify. So every time I go live, you'll be aware of, of my next move. Uh, are you when, are you going to interview Crazy D? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I uh, I talked. Uh, Tracy D texted me about two weeks ago, right before uh, New Year's Eve. I'm doing a uh, reunion show for the NWA and the Posse album. Remember the one they first did when everybody was on the Jeep in the alley back there? Well, and I, and I put that notice out to all the fellas. Uh, Crazy D was one of the first ones to respond. Um, he's in Vegas right now, so he said he definitely wanted to be a part of the show. I got Candyman, um, Arabian Prince, um, working on Jeeps right now. Of course, Dre won't be there. Cube won't be there. Don't even try it. Um, but I got Candyman, Arabian Prince, KD, and um, Crazy D. They all said they would be able to do the show with me. So I'm doing a uh, NWA and a Posse reunion show. 
Uh, okay. I, I, Lil E said he would do the show. Yes, I can get Lil E. Lil E's a good friend of mine. I will definitely reach out for Lil E. Uh, I saw him a few weeks ago, right before uh, right before Christmas, that Thanksgiving. He gave me his new number and told me he's ready to do the show. Free Ray Rick is in the house. There you go. There you go. Free Ray, what's up with your money? I can't hear you. Hold on there. Can you hear me now? I see you, but I can't hear you. Uh, We're trying to get it fixed. Okay, maybe. Let me see if it's me right quick. Let me check my settings right quick. Let me check my settings. What about now? Mine is on. No, I still don't hear you. Okay, I'm just checking all my stuff right quick. My mic is okay, on. Let me see here. Test one, two, test one, two. What you got, Doc? Can you hear me? I hear you. Okay, I hear you now. Okay, I got I to gotta take the headphones out and do something different. What's up, Rick? Man, been working all day. That's a good thing, man. That's a good I, thing. How you been? Man, I can't complain, Doc. I can't complain. I mean, you know what? One thing about you, I always like about you, you always smiling, man. You always like you just I, well, you know they already they already climbing on the, on the chat room already. They say he got a he got a few big few million buried in the backyard. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, this time I ain't gonna have to bury it. It's legal. It's legal. Oh it's shit! Legal this time, baby. Hey man, um, you know your girl sent me a few questions to ask you. I'm gonna knock some of them out right quick, and uh, we're gonna get to the good stuff in just a minute. How this pandemic treating you, man? Man, it's been uh, it's a sad time, really. You know, for uh, uh, the people that we lost. You know, we we done lost over three hundred thousand people here in this country. Which okay, uh, I I know that we didn't have to lose. What happened? Hold on. Can you hear me now? Hold on, there. What the fuck happened? Oh shit! My shit go crazy. Yes. Oh. You got it. Hold on there, Doc. I hear you loud and clear. There you go. I'm back. You back? You back? I'm back. I think I'm back. Can you hear me? I hear you, but you ain't moving. All right. What the hell happened, Rick? Man, I don't know. I hear you now. You know, I, okay. you know it's always some shit. I don't mess with these. They froze, but they hear me. So keep talking, Rick. Go on, talk. Yeah, uh, you know we lost over three hundred thousand people. You know with this pandemic and uh, people that we really didn't have to lose. You know, right. uh, we got a doctor that Ben uh, uh, had uh, something that could put the the virus at bay, and it, it's crazy that so many people don't pay attention. Man, uh, it's sad that all we have to do is pay attention and listen to the people with the knowledge and uh we just don't do it you know i had i had two or three of my friends that wind up coming down with it uh, uh I, I done lost like seven people that i know uh in the pandemic but i had um uh, a couple really really close friends called in about about two weeks ago but luckily you know i was able to get the, the vitamin d and the zinc to them in time to uh, 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 to help them recover, one did go in intensive care, but he only stayed there a couple of days, and he was back out, breathing, came back, and everything. So, uh, as for myself, I've been good. You know, uh, no problems, no, no problems with the immediate family. Um, but you know, my heart goes out to everybody else that who who's lost a, a family member or a loved one. You know, uh, during this time. Where you go? You done disappeared on me. Don't, I'm here. Don't, hey, don't leave me here by myself. I just, uh, you know how this shit go, man. I've been talking to people for the last past 30 minutes without a problem in whatsoever. As soon as you come on, uh, everything go crazy. But that's all right. All right. Ain't no rush. Ain't I'm no rush. You. I'm going to talk you know, to they you. Didn't me, they didn't tell me it was you I was going to be interviewing with. You know, Otherwise, I wouldn't even took. Took my shower. I don't came in and got right on the mic. But you know, <laughs> I've been up in the mountains messing with marijuana all day. 
and you know I wanted to get it, get it off of me, you know. But if they had told me it was you, I would just say let it stay on me till after I finish. Yeah, you know, you know how we do it. You know how we do it. Uh, man, I'm trying to figure something out here right quick. I had all this stuff worked out, and uh, for some reason I'm not on the screen right now. But I ain't gonna let that stop me, Doc. I see uh, you. I see you. But you ain't moving. I ain't moving. Okay. Well, I ain't gonna stop the show, man, because. You ain't got to see me, okay? You ain't got to see me. They want to see you anyway, okay? Um, hey, man, I understand you You, you got a, a legitimate uh, marijuana license. Yes, 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 yes. I, I got into the social equity program. You know, the city of Los Angeles uh, uh, voted to allow, because, you know, it was a, a male white dominated business. It's like 98% male whites that, that run the marijuana industry on the legal end. And uh, we felt that it was only fair, you know, with so many blacks going to prison for selling marijuana that that we'd be allowed to participate in the legal market. So uh, we rolled up our sleeves and went to City Hall and went to to the, to the state capitol. And uh, we were able to get them to not only uh, put a social equity plan in for, for blacks, uh, but also to allow convicted felons to, to participate in the license because you know a lot of licenses now you can't if you if you're a felon you can't you can't get the license right but marijuana is not one of them that's crazy because when i went when i went to get my liquor license man i had a liquor license uh back in the early 2000s i mean they gave me so much shit to get that liquor license man it was ridiculous and i'm like damn you know you know if what, what they send you through is so ridiculous but hey man I'm glad for you. I'm glad, glad to see you making your thing. What's it called? What's your what's your label called? Your uh, product called, man. What's your strain called? I got two brands. One is called LA Kingpin, and the other one is called Freeway. Uh, you can get them downtown LA. It's only a few stores. I'm only in about 20 stores right now. You know. Okay. Uh, is it all flower yeah. product? I got everything. I got flower, shatter, combo, vapes. Uh, I got I got the whole array of, of products, and um, right now I'm, I'm uh, working on a, a, a edible line as as we speak. You know what? I, I tried the edible thing, man. That shit right there. You got to watch that shit. That shit sneak up on your ass like a thief. Oh, man, I took some uh, a couple of weeks ago and I was on pause. Uh, I was at home by myself. I, I started to pick up the phone and call my boy and say, man, you need to come over here. I feel like I'm about to die. <laughs> dude, dude, you know, I sit here and I tell people, you know, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell nobody I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm an angel by no means. I didn't try some everything. When you're a grown ass man, you didn't get you get a chance to try a whole lot of shit, make a lot of mistakes. I tried that uh, edible edible thing on a mistake one time. I'm at the club. I had a bad habit of stealing cupcakes. Okay, I love cupcakes, right? <laughs> I set the cupcake off the top of the thing, and I'd run. You know, I go run to the corner, eat it real quick. And I did this one night, man. And um, all of a sudden, in like a ton of bricks, I was high as hell. And I told my bartender, I said, "Babe, I said, um, she, she said, what's wrong?" I said. Shit, I'm, I don't I don't feel right. I feel like I'm high. So you smoke something? I ain't had nothing in a couple days. I, all I had was a cupcake. She fell out laughing. She said, oh, shit, them cupcakes, is uh, they are TAC cupcakes. I'm like, oh, shit. And it sneak up on you. It don't, it don't hit you at one time. Right. It and sneak up on you. It was, I ate them on a Saturday night. I didn't come down to like Monday morning, man. That's a good thing. It, the, yeah. high, the high is cheap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, for y'all who don't know, for some reason, my screen is frozen, but I still got sound, so I'm gonna leave Rick on the screen and let him do the talking, and I'll just interview him like we all, you know, some shit. Cause sometimes technology just will not act right. I've been talking to these people for the last past twenty minutes till you got here, Doc. Everything was running fine. All of a sudden, a little little something popped up on my screen. I disappear. I have no sound, but I got I got vocals, so I'm not gonna stop this show. To uh, yeah, I got 43 people on the line right now. I'm not gonna stop this show to uh, you know to, to reset anything. We just got to go it out my ass. That's all. We got you. You the guest. Let's go. Let's go. I'm with it. Um, man, one of the questions your girl asked me, <clears throat> what had me to ask, um, was um, when you got out. How will, how long take you to get 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 stabilized, man? I took a minute, you know. Uh, uh, when when I got out, my family was more unstable than I was, you know. Wow. You'd have thought it was the other way around, but uh, 
when I got out, my family was very unstable. Uh, my mom was about 45,000 behind on her mortgage. She had took one of those, uh, one of those predatory loans that they was doing to people. Right. And, uh, her, her note started off at eight hundred dollars a month, uh, but by the time I got home, it had it had, it had uh, climbed up to thirty two hundred dollars a month, yeah. and she was on a fixed income of about eighteen hundred, and I think her husband might have been around two thousand. So her husband died. Wow. Uh, and I don't know why, but they didn't have insurance, you know, covering. You know, she'd had insurance covering him where. If something happened to one of them, you know, it pays the mortgage off, but she didn't have that. So uh, when I got home, she was losing her house and they was trying to evict her. So uh, uh, the only thing I could think about is my mama being homeless. Uh, so I started trying to save her house and, and uh, you know, it was just a disaster. Wow, man. I'm sorry to hear that, Doc. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, I understand you're helping other artists get, in, get into the marijuana game. Yeah, I'm helping. I'm helping everybody that 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 uh that wants uh that wants help. You know, um, you know, some people you just can't help. Some people you can't help, man. I don't give a damn what you do. But if there's somebody out there that they want to get into the game, they're interested. Uh, all they got to do is look me up. You know, uh, I, I go around the country. You know, before the pandemic, I was going around the country teaching about why blacks should get involved in the cannabis industry. You know, most people don't know, but this is a fifty-eight billion dollar a year industry just in California alone. Wow. So, so we're talking about a whole lot of money is going to be made. And, you know, this money could do a lot for our community. You know, could buy books, computers. Uh, uh, um, we, we wouldn't need nobody to feed our people. You know, if, right, if, right. if we had a nice chunk of that, that 58 billion, we, we well, could take um, Just so you know, also, man, I'm involved in, uh, in the U.S. Weed Channel. It's a, it's a TV show, a TV channel on the Roku platform that highlights various weed programs. Uh, whether you, you know, uh, we highlight uh, various strands. We talk about cooking with CBD, cooking with THC, and uh, we'll be up and running later this month. And we're doing our main launch on uh, 420 of this year. So um, when, when we're ready, I'm coming at you. I'm making you one of my we'll make you one, of, one of my first guests on the show. Let's do it. Let's do it. You know, me and you done interviewed a couple of times. I've been over to the house in the back. Where, where y'all made all them hits at? I I seen the hit. I seen where the hits come from. Hey man, you know I, I tell people sometimes, man. You know we were doing our thing about the same time. I'm doing entertainment. You you doing your street moves, your pharmaceutical moves, and I said everything was fine until them two mixed together. The music, <laughs> when music got together, it ain't been right since then, Rick. It's like they put peanut butter and peanut butter and chocolate together. And the recent yeah. pieces ain't been right since then. Yeah, you know, I used to come by the club all the time. You know, we we come by there in the low riders and you know and and, and blow the horn. All right, man. And the girls jump out the window, drop out, climb down the pole, come out and hop in the car. I understand. <laughs> you know, I, I I I talk about that all the time, man. How um times are so much different, dude. I mean, even back then, if uh if cats was hanging out in the parking lot. We use it in, we, you know, every once in a while somebody sees somebody they didn't like, but for the most part, you could do a little parking lot pimping without getting shot, even on Avalon, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of cats never came in the club. They just swooped by, especially around 2.30, 3 o'clock when the people start leaving out, you know? And uh, for the most part, we did that. We would exit the club with no problem. Every once in a while, I'm not going to tell you with 100%, but for the most part, we put, you know, two or 300 people in the club without any incident whatsoever, man. And um, that's something I wish we can get back to today. How do you yeah, feel about, these, how do these you youngsters are just, they just got a different mentality right now, man. You know, they just, uh, the respect level was just not there. How do you feel about the, about the current level, the current state of hip hop, Doc? Uh, I, I feel like uh, uh, it's, it's starting to make some changes. Uh, uh, I think that, that we need to, uh, Put out some more positive messages because those guys have so much power in their hand, and, and yeah. you know it's sad that that they don't use it better than they do. Uh, but you know who am I to say? You know how how one person should live their life. You know it's theirs, and they they can live it the way they want to. But I, I wish that they would use their power to to uplift our community because our community need it right now. You know even with this pandemic, we were hit harder than anybody else. Uh, um, 
you know, you know, I hear a lot of people talking about, oh, I ain't taking the vaccine. And I tell them, you ain't got opportunity to take it. They're not going <laughs> to let you take it. No way. So you, you <laughs> they already made that decision for you. So anything that's good or, 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 or possibly good for us, you know, the system has, has blocked us out. And, and I believe that it's up to us to uh, uh, get ourselves in position to where we can start uh, um, benefiting. You know, one of my favorite books was uh, by my man, Reginald Lewis, who was the first black billionaire in the country. And he said, why should white men have all the fun? And that's all he had to tell me. And I agree with him. They shouldn't. So I want to have some of it. Well, they, they always told us we gotta die. Have to get off of them. We die. We can't get that right here. We had to wait till, till we died so we can get out. We get out in the afterlife. But like, I don't want. What you, wait, 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 wait. You get all the fun right now. I got to wait till I'm dead to get that. Come on, man. That ain't make no sense. We we'll go to heaven. Yeah, I, I gotta hopefully go to heaven. Okay. Yeah. Hey, man. Um, how do you feel about the it, show so far? Oh, everything good. You know, man. You we good, man. Come on now. Yeah, you know, I, eat eat turkey on Thanksgiving Day. That's the only time you can eat turkey is, is Thanksgiving and. You know, you only have pies and, and stuff on holidays. So, you know, I, I believe that, you know, I should eat. If I want turkey, I eat turkey every day if I want to, okay. you know. And, and and that's the position that we have to get ourselves in to where we can do whatever we want to do whenever we want to do it. Not when somebody give us permission. I mean, that's just like being in jail, you know. That's why I didn't like jail, because I had to ask permission. You know, can I go to the bathroom, you know. Uh, can I do And that's kind of the way it is for a lot of people out here on the street, you know, because they can't do what they want to do. They can't pay their water bill. So their water's off. Their lights is off. They can't go to the grocery store because they ain't got no money. They don't have no car. You know, they can't buy their kids uh, uh, the kind of shoes they want or the clothes they want. They can't buy them the education. So but the only way that we're going to do that is we have to change. And, and it really starts from from us changing our mentality. All right. Um, I get that, Doc. Um, if, if y'all wondering why you don't see me, man, for some reason, I don't know. I was talking to Rick and I had a glitch on the computer and I refused to waste any time re, uh, rebooting just to bring me back up. Rick is here. He can hear me. I can hear him. Y'all want to hear y'all want to hear from him anyway. So don't even worry about me. I'm going to be here tomorrow anyway. So um, so I, when they did the when they did the show, Snowfall, they consult you at all or what? Nah, man. You know, John and I was, uh, I thought John was going to be the director of my movie. So uh, me and John had been working on the script. Uh, um, and then all of a sudden, I see in the paper that uh, John Singleton has signed a deal for this show called Snowfall. And uh, I was a little hurt behind it. You know, I was like, damn, John, you know, like, I thought we was cool. You know, why would you go do a drug movie in L.A. And you don't even ask me to be a consultant. You know, I need money. You know, I'm running out here broke. You know, I don't have no money. But you don't even offer me a consultant job. And you're doing a drug movie about L.A. So that what that told me is that you didn't want any authenticity or the authenticity that he was going to use was the stuff because he, he bought one of my first books. OK, so. uh, uh he took the authenticity out of my book and 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 switched it around and 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 and, and made it his own. Mm. That, that, that's pretty much what happened to me in Straight Outta Compton. Same thing. Um, I, uh, I I I you know you, you know my story with Straight Outta Compton. I in fact the same person Peanut called me to interview you. The same one that called me to go down to go down to uh, the movie set to see them do Straight Outta Compton. Peanut, your, that's, your that's story. Right. Huh? Your story. <laughs> yeah. Peanut called me up. You know, me and Peanut have been friends forever. And uh, he called me up talking. Oh, you need to come, you coming out to the set? I said, hell no, for what? Man, they got a guy playing. You know, Peanut known for uh, doing bullshit. So, Peanut, man, not today, dude. Oh, man, no, no, man. They got a guy playing. You we got a shirt and a jerry curl. Peanut, don't fuck <laughs> me right now, man. I go down there, Ricky. Sure enough, they got a brother playing me. Anybody called me and told me nothing. I know how you feel. Anybody, ain't nobody told me shit. It wasn't for Peanut. I wouldn't have known nothing about nobody playing Lonzo, you know, in, in Trey Outta Compton. And I, I don't wonder why that, I wonder why it is that folks just for, hey man, you know, come on, be a consultant or something. You know, you would think that would be a common courtesy. And, and you know, and you know, with, with most people it is, but, but with us as black people, uh, we're so used to taking advantage of each other. 
uh, you know, I was asking, I was talking to one of my partners the other day, and I was like, man, why do people, why do people fuck over the people who help them? I mean, if you want to get, if you want to get kicked right in the ass, help somebody out. <laughs> Help them out and let them get on their feet, and they're gonna kick you right in the crack. Yes, uh, sir. And that 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 that's just to me that that that's crazy. You know, if you help me, I'm gonna do everything I can to help you back. You know, because right. I figure that if I help you back, you're gonna do it again, but even bigger this time. And and, right. and so many of us, we get it twisted that we feel like because you help somebody, that that's a sign of weakness. I believe. Well, you know, uh, you know what? Now, I think it's it's an old school thing versus new school, man. I know when I first got Eve after dark, when I first opened Eve after dark in 1979, the old man that gave me a shot at 22 years old to have my own nightclub, Jeffrey Harris. I, that's my that's, I call him my entertainment godfather. He told me, he said, "Look, I'm gonna give you a shot, but you can't pull the ladder up behind you. You gotta leave it down." Help somebody else come up. Don't be chicken shit. That's what he told me. Yeah. Give you a shot. You got to give somebody else a shot. That's how we're gonna make this thing happen. And that's what I did. Okay. And that was that was his philosophy he gave to me. But unfortunately, nobody else, um, nobody else followed that philosophy. So you know, I I, I feel you, Doc. What's up, Peter Sanderson from Mississippi? What's up, my boy from VIP Records? Uh, Crystal Butler, uh, Wayne Jackson. What's up with you, folks? I got to give my people a shout out. Derek, what's happening with you? Um, I'm here live with my man, Freeway Rick. I got a little technical problem. You might see my name, but you don't see my face. And why, I don't know. But I'm quite sure when I pull this, when I pull the plug, it's going to pop right up. And I refuse, <laughs> I refuse to stop this interview just for y'all to see my face. Y'all see my face all the time. Right about now, as long as you got my voice and you can hear me, Freeway Rick, we're going to make it happen. I mean, how did you feel? When you get out of jail and find out somebody had hijacked your name. Well, you know what? Uh, it, it's like a double headed sword, Alonzo. You know, you, on one hand, you're saying this is the utmost respect. Somebody taking your name, saying that I want to be little you. You know how it is out here in L.A. You know, there's little dog, little Pookie, little, yeah. little Ron, big Ron and and, and so forth. Uh so, so when he did it, I, I, I was like, wow, he's trying to show me the utmost respect. But then on the other hand, the way he did it is he could have picked up a pen and a piece of paper and wrote me a letter and said, hey, man, I love you so much that I'm going to tattoo your name on my hand and I'm going to start calling myself you. Uh, I, I just felt that that's the way it should have been done. By not being done like that, I, I was a little salty about it. Um and then the fact that, you know, when I got out, he, he didn't give me a care package. You know, he, he didn't have a pair of tennis shoes, some jeans, a shirt, you know, uh, nothing. You know, he gave me absolutely no assistance. And then I hear him on the radio one day saying that uh, that I was salty because I was down on my luck. And, and I was like, damn, if a motherfucker down on his luck, that's the time you should give him a hand, especially when he gave you a hand. Right. You, know, right. you took his name. And was able to catapult yourself into a position of power. So that's just another one of those incidents where I'm telling you that that you know you help somebody out, they're gonna kick you right in the crack, you know, as hard as they can. We'll still toe boots on. <laughs> I got some folks wanna holler at you, man. Uh, my my man uh, Stephen Law said it's a dope interview. He definitely can relate to helping people. Uh, my boy Bo Brown in the house. He said we got Grandmaster Lonzo and Free Ray Rick. Chico Brown said what's up. And my boy Tyrone, Tyrone say, uh, uh, Rick, it's Tyrone. The ca I got a camera Richardson with you, man. Uh, <laughs> Get him, my people. What up? What up, Tyrone? What up? What, what? up, Chico? It's funny how your people is my people, okay? Well, we, 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 we are fun to say, you know, our, 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 our house is probably ain't, you know, where I grew up at and where you uh, where you grew up at probably is not more than four, three miles apart, maybe right. less than that. So, you know, we're in the same area. And then and then we cast such a big we we cast a big web over 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 the city. That's you know, cool. uh, uh whether people know it or not, uh we, we definitely cast a web over, over the city and um we, we had to, you know, uh, overlap somewhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was it's um it's like my man Wayne Wayne Jackson said, we all the same lane, okay? 
Mm-hmm. I met at your dot. It's um, it's amazing, man. I mean, we, we've met, we, we've met in past, and I mean, I think I pretty much met you after you got out of jail. Um, you did, you did. That's when I came to the club when you yeah. when you're doing the hip hop shows. Right. Uh, I had a couple artists that I was working with, and they were performing at your shows, and I came down, and and that was the first time that we we actually met in person. Right. Uh, like I said, I'd have been, I'd have been outside your doors hundreds hundreds of times you know but uh, uh would never go in uh uh you know i was just waiting outside <laughs> hey man what's up chuck dennis um my man says uh pimp plays the hustlers network says how you feel about vlad getting rappers to dry snitch on themselves well you know what i don't i don't blame that on vlad you know i, I blame it on whoever is talking and don't know what they're talking about or don't know how to do it. I, i've been on blad's blad many times and he asked me you know questions you know uh have you ever killed anybody you know <laughs> you're like come on man ain't no statutory limitation for for murder you right. know yeah, that's something you just don't if you did n- not that i ever killed anybody but uh, uh uh if i did i would never tell nobody right you know? Uh, they say they say uh, you know you go tell somebody can you keep a secret? Hell no, they ain't gonna keep no secret. Right. right. They, they can't wait to go tell somebody. So you know for those guys to get on there and 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 talk about some of the stuff that they get on there, you know they have to take some of that responsibility as well. I said the same thing, Doc. I mean, if a man asks you a question, you got two you got two options to answer it or not answer it. Just because you exactly. have to tell him nothing, okay? And like you said. Uh, murder and kidnap ain't no statute of limitations on that. So you could do it 20 years ago and get your ass a nice little, a little fat ass case in 2021. Yes. Um, and, and I see a lot of cats, man, try to overflex and find themselves, you know, with a brand new case. You you, you just told on yourself. I mean, only thing I think is crazy than that is cats do a do a lick and be on Instagram with the money or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Man, they- they broke in. Uh, they broke in one of the one of the places that uh that helped me put my product together. And uh, they called me the other day, and and uh, they was like, "Hey, they they selling your product online." <laughs> <laughs> wow! I say, man, I say, man, these people are crazy. But uh, you, you know, this is this the age that 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 we in right now. You know, show and and what they say, fake it till you make it. Yeah. And the cold thing is that they started that in the eighties. You know, they. Man, fake it till you make it. Fake. It. I mean, when the people first started saying that, and, and I guess it got to the point to where they say, "Hell with making it. I'm just gonna fake it." Hmm. That's deep. You know, I was reading the other day, man. You know, I know you know about heard about Dre and his uh his uh, health condition. We all praying for him. I did. I did. But somebody decided they gonna break into the man's house while he in intensive care. Man, that's some cold shit right there, man. Wow. That's some cold shit. Okay. Wow. That, that's some that, dude. I. Excuse me, that's some nigga shit right there. Okay, why? You know how how low down can you be to break into the man's house when he's in intensive care? The only thing I heard that was colder than that one of the, one of the uh, rappers got killed in Miami, and people was living in his house, raided his house. Okay, while the man was laying on the gurney, they took all this shit out of his pad. Okay, when his parent when his folks got to the house, his house was dead and empty. He just got shot. Wow. You know, so it's, it's, that's, that's some cold folks in the world, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, uh, when when you uh, feed yourself uh, uh, things that scavengers eat, then you turn into a scavenger. Ah, uh, okay, okay. You're right, Doc. Okay. Yeah, you got you to gotta change your diet. Yeah. You know, and, and folks have to understand, man, um, ha, ha, you know, when I saw, I saw one of your... Uh, I just seen so many different movies about you, documentaries or whatever. They had one, the cops were saying that they were trying to find you and you were so low profile, you had walked past them a couple of times and they had no idea that was you, okay? Oh yeah, many times they, they raid the park, or, uh, raid the neighborhood and 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 I'll be able to walk past them. You know, they, 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 they couldn't recognize me because I look like everybody else. And, and, and I, I enjoy looking like everybody else. I don't want to, to 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 overshine 
uh, the next person. I don't want to be big me, little you. You know, I, I feel that we're all equal. And, and I don't think that money money makes you special. I don't believe that. You know, okay. uh, uh, I think that you're special from the deeds that you do and uh, 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 the actions that you take is what makes somebody special. Now, you know, back in the day, man, um, everybody, I remember when the, when, when the gang first hit the streets and folks started having money for the first time, you could tell who was doing what at one time, okay? The Suzuki Samurais, the <laughs> trucks, you know, the, the big ass chains, you know, and at one point in time, they called it profiling, but I'm like, that's almost like dry stitching on yourself. I mean, you, 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 the average cat, Ain't got money for that right there unless you get it. You know, that average cat with a job ain't got money for that for, for spin it to spin it like that. The it's, Ferraris, the Benzes, the convertible yeah. Benzes. Remember, it used to be, I man, LA used to be like a car show every day. Every I mean, day, okay. You know, guys was riding down the street with twenty and thirty thousand dollars worth of sound equipment in in, in, in a blazer. Yes, sir. And, I mean, you I mean, guys would cut the would actually cut the roof off the car. They have a four door uh, Benz, cut the roof off. And put a pull up bin, a pull up top on top of the bin just to have a convertible. I Man, you talking? You talking about my partner? Who that? <laughs> 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 okay, we know we know who we're talking about. Okay, <laughs> he cut the photo bins. Cut you know, up. I was, I was at his house. A, I was at his house a couple months ago. We laughed about that. We, we uh, laughed about that old bins. You talking about Mike Conception? Mike Conception. Okay. Uh, you know, now me and Mike, man, um, I'm going to try to get Mike on my, on my show, man. Me and Mike go back to about 73. I, again, I never gangbang, but because the streets were so different, you got respected if you didn't gangbang, okay? People respected the fact you didn't gangbang. And I remember I had a 64 Chevy out of 64 Malibu, and Mike was going to Mike was still going to Washington. And I rolled the, I had a girl went to Washington, and you could do that. Okay, as long as you didn't come disrespectful, you can come up to the school, pick up your girl, and get out, get on. Mike right. went to my um, my uh, sixty four Malibu, and we was negotiating, talking back and forth. He never bought it, but we became cool in doing that. And then it seemed like every woman I ever met, Mike had hollered at him at some point in time. Okay, <laughs> like, you know Mike? Like, yeah, I know Mike. Me and Mike go black, blah blah blah. And every time I would see Mike on Crenshaw, because Mike always on Crenshaw, Lonzo, when you writing your book? Lonzo, you bullshit. When you writing your book? And when I finally decided to write my book, the first person I think in the book is Mike Conception. I haven't talked to him in a while. I haven't had a chance to give him his prop. But, uh, I left. I gave. I sent. I sent a book to him. Don't know if he got it or not. But I saw autograph and sent it to him. And he, you know, he was always been one of them cats, man. You know, he ain't to be messed with. But he's a cool brother if you like if he, if you like it, okay. But he had he, he he's known for his cars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mike, Mike, something. I've been, I've been up to his house. You know, he got a, a great big old house up there. Mike doing real good for himself right now. Yeah, and uh, and and he, and he got a lot of game too. Oh yeah. Mike got, Mike got mad mad game. I mean, you know, me and him talked about the old days. You know, when when we were in the street together and. Uh, how far he had grown from that and how he took lessons from the game, which enabled him to to do the things that uh, that he's able to do right now. You know, uh, um, you know, Mike, Mike's Mike's uh, 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 credits go long, man. You know, from Guy, Teddy Riley and Guy and uh, Silky Fine and Rome and, and now Kendrick Lamar, you know, uh, top dog. Uh, Mike has done some incredible stuff, man. You know, um, and I and and to be in a wheelchair too, you know, yeah. and 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 with his educational background, you know, Mike Mike uh, uh, didn't have he don't have education. Oh no shit! I, I, not, I, no, not a formal education. Uh, I I don't know if Mike I don't know if Mike could read or not. You know, uh, uh, but but it, I don't think he could. You know, hmm. so 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 he really high school, huh? He was always around Washington. He's chasing them girls, you know. He always chased them girls. You now, you know, you, you know, he can read them girls. He <laughs> might not be able to read a book, but he can read them girls. <laughs> oh, <he> like that. <laughs> Anything else you want to share with us, Doc? We just kicking it right now, man. I'm glad to have you on the show. Glad to see you doing well. Um, uh, I, I got a question. 
What does it take for an artist to get into the weed business, man? How much money do you need? If I want to start my own world class uh, strand, what I, what I got to do? Really, you could you could probably get in for about thirty. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand, you can get in. I, I can show somebody with thirty thousand how to get in. Uh, you know, if it's a big enough artist, I'll pay the thirty thousand myself. You know, if I know it's somebody that I know that they're gonna get out and they're gonna sell their weed. Uh, a lot of times, you know, people people come in and, and, and uh, you know, you spend that money and then they don't want to go out and promote. They don't want to show up to the stores. And, uh, uh, you know, I just I don't want to be involved. I don't want to be involved with nobody like that. OK. Now, how many uh, every I mean, it is that many different strands of weed that you can have yours. I can have mine. Everybody can have their own. It's oh, cool. man, it's thousands. It's thousands of different strands of weed. No shit. Hmm. Man, there's so many different strains. And see, the thing about weed is that me and you could take the same seeds and plant them, and our weed would be totally different. Mm. So each each grower grows their weed different. You know, it won't grow the same because, you know, we keep it at different temperatures. If you change the temperature of weed, it'll change uh, the way the weed look, the way it tastes, and, and, and how it gets you high. I did that. That I did not know. That yeah. I did not know. I don't become I don't become somewhat of a weed expert. Okay. Uh, they okay. they want me to come to Detroit right now for uh, for an event and speak down there. Uh, but I go I go all over. You know, like I said, I've been all over the country, even Jamaica, uh, teaching the Jamaicans about weed. <laughs> How you gonna teach Jamaicans about weed? Hey, that's what I thought. I would have thought that too if they if they told me that 15 years ago. But now. Uh, I know that there's a lot of people, even though they may be involved, they still don't know the business. Ah, okay. Is there is there a special kind of soil that produces a better type of weed? Well, you know, soil that's that's a preference thing. You know, some some people use cocoa, some use soil, uh, some just use uh, um, I can't think of these little blocks. Yeah, how uh, things? Yeah, I can't think of the name of them right this second. And some use rocks. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's so many different ways, but it's really just preference. Okay. All right. Is there a certain temperature? I mean, there's a certain um, uh, atmosphere that's more productive for weed than other. Temperature, you want to keep you want to keep it right around 74 degrees. Um, and, you know, you could probably go up to 78, but you don't want to keep it much, much higher than that. Because if it gets too hot, it, it starts to morphodite. It, it starts to turn okay. into a, a, a man and a woman. They don't know which one it is. And uh, it, it'll grow seeds, which nobody nobody want weed with seeds in it. Right. You know, uh, um, Nate Dog, you say that weed no seeds, <laughs> but if you uh, if you let it get too hot or too cold, it morphodite, uh, and it morphodites trying to uh, reproduce itself because it don't want to die. Okay. 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 Wow. Okay. Um. I got a question. The Pimp Players Hustlers Network actually want a question. I got a question for you. What do you think about Master P's, Master P's food line, noodles, pancake mix, and wrap snacks? He said he had the, uh, the wrap chips. They was pretty good. Have you had any of those products? No, nah, I haven't. Um, that's good, though, Master P's doing that. You know, we, we need product. As a people, you know, one of the things that I, I, um, I say is that we need our own products, you know, because without a product, how are you going to get some money? Right. If you don't have nothing to sell, you know, uh, and, and I said it all the time, you know, I'll be driving down the freeway and you see the guys on the side of the freeway. The black guy's got a cup. Ah, ah, you know, yeah. guy got, he got flowers, oranges, apples. Ah. Uh, now, who you think going to get the money first? Right. Who, who's going to make the most money? And, right. and, and uh, we, we got to get product. You know, I said, well, why these guys didn't take that money after they collect them quarters, they take them and go buy them a bag, a couple bag of oranges. They're going to get more money. Right. Right. But we, we haven't learned that, that we need products. So, uh, um, I'm, I love the idea that master P is doing that. You know, master P is always ahead of the game, man. Always. Like, always. Okay. Uh, Dominique John Wick and my man, Jonathan Hassan says, uh, master P got a figure called Hootie Hoots. <laughs> <laughs> Hoodie hoos, hoodie hoes. Uh, they didn't change it up on me. Uh, Uncle Uncle P's Cajun rice. Uncle P's Cajun. You know what? I ain't mad at it, man. Cause we 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 ate Uncle Ben's forever. Okay, 
Nobody clowns Uncle Ben. Okay. Why would, you know, if he want to go Uncle P's, hey, dude, you know, it, it may seem silly today, but 10 years from now, when, when it's on your plate and it's around the world, it won't be silly no more. Huh. And, and Uncle Ben was owned by some white company. Yes, sir. And so was Angel Mama. Sometimes enemies when it comes to stuff like that, if we don't step up and support it, you know what I'm saying? It takes it takes support to make things happen. I if without support, it ain't gonna happen. You can't ask for the discount. You got to pay the price that the man. You know you, you don't know what that man's expenses are. So the man asks you, hey man, it can cost you this right here. Give the man the money. You give it to everybody else. You don't nobody negotiate with the Koreans. They don't know negotiate with the Latinos. Whatever the man, whatever the price is, because it, it costs to get be in business and uh, pay the man what he need. And you know, too, when, when we deal with with, with 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 our own kind, we hold ourselves to a higher standard than we hold everybody else. We expect for everything to go perfect when you're dealing with with another black. And uh, we really shouldn't hold ourselves to such a high standard because most of these people have the financing to have everything done right. And we don't have that financing. So it's right. very important that when we're dealing with each other that we have some some patience uh, uh, and some understanding that, you know, things may not be perfect with this person. It may be somebody who, who's struggling to get themselves on track. <laughs> we are not being perfect right now. For those who are watching this, this interview and you don't see me, I don't know what happened. It was working fine. It says some, I had a glitch. I just refuse to stop the show to reset it. So you hear my voice. Of all you see is Free Ray Rick. Don't take it personal. Um, we got the sound. We got the questions. I got the chat line. We got Rick. We rolling. You don't need me right now. We make we here. Call. We here. We are definitely here. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Mac with the dopest lyrics. MC. Okay. Um, I'm getting ready to do some. I'm getting ready to do some music too. Uh, uh, Lonzo. <laughs> Uh, I got a, I got a young lady out of Atlanta that I'm working with right now named Dominique uh, uh, Daniels. Uh, and when I heard her sound, I was like, oh, you a star. OK, so uh, I, I've been working with her a few months now and. Uh, I think she's going to be big. What's your label called? You know what? I ain't even got the label yet. You know, I, I had to get the artist before I get the label. Well, it's just having no label. You ain't had no artist. So I, I'm going to start with the artist and then I I, I create the, the label uh, after I get the buzz going. I mean, um, how much different is it for you to be doing the weed thing? I know I, mean, I know it's a form of drugs, but from what you what you were doing to what you are doing, how much of a difference is that for you? Well, you know what? I, I noticed that the same skills that I use in the illegal market also works in this market as well. Uh, um, one of the most important things is treat other people how you want to be treated. And, you know, when you do that, that'll take you a long ways. Right. You got it. Doc. That, that's, that's very true. That's very true. While we while we on the line, folks, if you haven't subscribed, liked and notified on my YouTube channel, please push the subscribe, like and share this interview and tell them the, the, we don't know what happened to Lonzo. He was there, but he disappeared. Uh, but he's still here in spirit and voice and free Ray Rick is holding it down. And we got a historic interview as somebody said right here on the, uh, Mac, Maxie was that Maxie Mixon said, we got a historic interview and yes, we do. And I'm not, I refuse to stop it just to bring me on the damn screen. Fuck that. We got it going on. What up Maxie? Uh, yeah, so so you know, Lonzo, we just have to uh, continuously grow. One of the most important things is to continuously grow. Never be satisfied. Constantly try to make yourself better every single day, and and that's how I, I really, you know, when I got out of prison, uh, I made my mind up. No matter what position I was in, you know, when I got out and my mom was losing her house, I continually, continuously try to figure out ways to uh, make myself grow and and you know and that's how i got myself in the position i'm in now you know i'm also doing boxing as well uh, i got i got a few fighters signed uh my number one protege is a, a kid out of philadelphia named nafia charles uh he'll be fighting for a title next month uh uh one day next month i'm not sure today well wait but, uh, 
a one thirty five. He in that money class. Oh, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna go after one of the big guys. Uh, probably summertime. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna ask for, you know, one of those guys that uh, uh they got the big belts. Okay. Good luck on that, man. I'm a big fight fan. Doc. I want I want to see some fights though. I, I no disrespect to nobody. I come from the fight era when Sugar Ray and Tommy Hearns they didn't like each other, and you could tell because they tried to kill each other in the ring. They didn't box. They fought. Um, you know, when, when the fight was over with, wasn't the one or after party, you had to go to the emergency room. Them kind of <laughs> fights. You know, I'm kind of used to that right there, Doc. So, I mean, even when they, they were talking, I saw a thing on uh, Ali. Uh, when Ali and Frazier fought, I think Frazier won the first one, but they both spent seven days in the hospital pissing blood, okay? That ain't, yeah. you know, that ain't, the, that ain't what we got these days. We got, you know, both put on a pair of shades, Go to the after party. Make them another half a million dollars. Well, just, when they come, when they come out the ring with Nafir, they ain't going. Nafir trying to trying to take their head off every single round. Uh, so far, he hasn't got out the first round. He, he's knocking everybody out in the first wow. round. How old is this guy? Twenty years old. 20. I, I think he's. I think he's gonna be better than Floyd. What? And I ain't saying that just because he's my fighter. Okay. The kid, the kid got a lot of determination. You know, uh, uh, one of the things that I noticed about Floyd is that Floyd stay working out he stayed in great shape okay he stayed studying the game and the same thing with this kid this kid studies the game and uh uh man he got hands of steel when he hit them they go um who, who's, who's, this, who's in this corner besides you uh we we got a uh, uh rick another rick who is his, his uh trainer conditioning coach and then his dad uh, uh is one of his uh boxing coaches and also ivy robinson is his uh is his head a boxing coach. Okay. All right. I got a question for you, Rick. What's a personal question? When you was at the PKO game, could you name any white boy that was equal to you in what you was doing? Is there, is there another white counterpart that was equal to Freeway Rick? Mm, not, not that I know of. Okay. All right. Just wondering. So yeah, you, not, you, not that I know of. You were dealing straight with the, uh, the the cartels. Yeah, the Nicaraguans. Wow. Who was who wow. was dealing directly with the cartels? Hello. And, and also, they were dealing with the government. You know, the Nicaraguans had the government uh, uh, assistance because they were fighting a war in Nicaragua uh, that Ronald Reagan wanted to win badly. I had a buddy of mine who was in the game. He said, "Man, he went to he went to pick up a package, and it said uh, property of the federal government on top of it." He said, hey, shit, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go. He said, "Don't worry about it. no, 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 no. I got to go. I, said, I can't do this one right here." Hey, what's up, Aline? I see you, baby. Much well, you know, they, they needed that money. Huh? The government needed that money. Wow. And that was, you know, that was a cold game, man. I think that's what, if, I'm going to say something, one of my philosophies, one of my philosophies, it ain't got to do with the price of tea in China, but it's one of my philosophies. That's another reason why the government owes us reparations. They purposely brought that crack cocaine to our community to set us back. That's my yeah. personal opinion. That's another reason for reparations. And and if they didn't, they definitely uh, uh, they definitely uh, uh, um, set us up, you know. Set us up, exactly. Because all the ones who didn't get hooked on cocaine wind up going to prison, right? You know, for twenty, thirty years and forty years, and 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 you know, guys are just now finally getting out, and some are still in. You know, Harry will been in jail thirty some years right now. Wow, might just mention Harry on in the feed line too. And they wanted to do another another seven years. Did you ever hook up with Harry O in jail? Did you ever y'all ever cross yeah. paths? Yeah, 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 yeah. Harry was my first celly when I when I got to MDC. I was there. I was there when they formed Death Row. Wow, that's another story. Me and him were cellies when they formed Death Row. I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, uh, um, I'm kind of the reason that him and Shug hooked up. Uh, yeah. while, while we were selling, he was working on his wife Lydia's record, and uh, <clears throat> he he was producing it. And he had gave me a magazine, and and I was looking through the magazine, and I saw that Easy E and Dr. Dre had fell out. Okay, I told Harry O, uh, you know, the Easy and Dre had fell out, and and Dre needed some money, hmm. and um, that would be a great way. To get Dre to produce his wife's record 
It was by giving him some money okay. to produce the record. So Harry O reach out. You know, got in touch with Ron Brown. I, I was in the I, I was in the attorney room the first day that uh, uh the show came into MDC. No shit. As an attorney. Wow. They had okay. fixed him up as an attorney or wow. an attorney assistant. You know where he could come in because you know you can't uh 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 you just can't come in the building unless and you you know and sit where he was sitting at unless you're an attorney. Okay. My boy. Yeah, hey. I was there when he told David Kenner that he was going to show him how to make more money uh, uh, than he could have ever made as a lawyer. Wow, that's some deep shit. I got a buddy of mine on the AK's on the line. He said he produced four songs for Lydia's album, Anthony King. AK, he was over there with Terry Carter and them. Oh, oh yeah? Up. Yeah, he was, over, he was over there with, uh, I forgot the label. Come on. Um, damn. Ice Cube and Terry hooked up for a while and uh, had a label. And my boy AK was on the, he was on the, uh, Damn it! I know the label name. Of course, when the light is on, I can't think of shit. But um, I remember that though. You know, Mac Ten, Mac Ten came out of that, I believe. Yeah, right, right, right. Uh, what's what's the name of the label? AK, so I can uh fill my audience in, man. Give me that. Give me that. Give, drop it in the chat room, right quick. I know the label. Um, it wasn't high power. That was easy shit. It was a uh, heavyweight. There it is. Heavyweight records. That was Terry Carter's label with Ice Cube and uh, my man AK, talented brother out of Compton, said he just he, he, he uh, produced four four albums, four songs on Lydia's album. You know, yeah. it was funny, man. I, I never met Harry O, but he called me one day. Oh yeah, coming from prison. I was um, when they did the uh, when they did the um, Welcome to Death Row uh, documentary. Okay, and um, the the guy who did it, um, Lee Savage. Had me do it running the swap meets because you know I ran I I do all I did all the swap meet distributions I had a pretty good network and I guess somebody got word to Harry that he wasn't getting paid on the swap meet now I didn't know nothing about that I was giving I gave uh, homeboy all his money now if he didn't report it that wasn't on me and I got a, a Terry Carter called me next thing I know um, he said um, Harry want to holler at you and I'm like huh. And I, cause I, I never met, I never met Harry O before. He was real cool. Hey, Lonzo, how you doing, man? Uh, this is Harry O. I heard you, you know, running the swap meets for my people. Yeah, man, what's happening? How much money you get? I, I told him I gave, I gave him the information, and uh, don't know what happened to it. But that was the one time we had one conversation we had, hooked connected by Harry, by um, Terry Carr. That's amazing, man. Again, like you said, because we all in that little area, everybody knew everybody. You know, um, well, LA is big, but it's still small at the same time. You know, it's, it's, it's not that many, not that many guys in LA that's doing something. Right, and I, I guess that's that's how people's names start ringing. Whatever you're doing, if you try to do anything else, you pretty much go. The person's name is going to ring at some point in time. No yeah. doubt, no doubt. It's all good. It's all good. All right, man. I, I got you. Much love to you. Spending time with me, man. Dropping this, this information on me. I'm, I'm gonna get my folks in the chat room. Anybody got something they want to ask Rick right quick before we wrap this show, wrap this interview up? I, like I said before, if you don't see me on the screen, don't worry about it because uh, we had a glitch. Don't know what it was, but I did not want to re redo this show and lose my chat room. Um, so I sacrificed my face on the screen to make sure this show continue to go on, and that don't mean that no way. Man, tell everybody check me out at Freeway Ricky on Instagram and Freeway Rick Ross on Facebook. Uh, I'm building a new website. Uh, it's going to be freewayenterprise.com. Uh, be looking for that. But follow me if you're interested in getting into the cannabis business. Uh, get at your boy. Also, remember, I got two books out Freeway Rick Ross, an untold autobiography. It talks about me and the cocaine business, how I did it, the tricks I use, the finesse, uh, the strategies. And also, my new book, The 21 Keys of Success, talks about my first six months out of prison, how I was able to get out of prison. With only two hundred dollars, and if I told you how much money I'm making now, I had no kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, check out both of his books. Also, check out my book, NWA with La in NWA, not without Alonzo on Amazon. This is how we do it, folks. What's up? Hey, what's up, Junior? From Uncle Damn Army. I see you there, boy. I see you. Go to work. Much love, darling. She's an author as well. Um, Snoopy eats. Peace and blessings. Um, and my girl Helene Campbell says, call us for your insurance needs. Uh, in the meantime, folks, this is Lonzo, the godfather of West Coast Hip Hop, with my man Freeway Rick, the godfather of the streets. 
Appreciate, um, you. Appreciate you, Lonzo. Do your thing. Much I'm love, gone. thank you, man. Much love, right. everybody in the chat room. Next week, y'all. Next Thursday, I'll be back with my girl China Doll right here on um my Thursday show, y'all. Six o'clock next Thursday, live with China Doll. Hey, folks, you can't see me, but that's okay. I'm still here. In the meantime, we're out of here, folks. Peace.